Hey, welcome YouTubers. Welcome to the channel. I'm Mr. Reef Buster. On uh, this video, I'm going to talk about my recent visit to the Long Island Aquarium in Long Island, New York. Um, as you guys may or may not know, I live in Queens, New York. So I've been planning to visit the Long Island Aquarium for a while. Um, just haven't had the time and, you know, I've heard great stories about it. It's a great family experience if you go with your family. Um, so I decided to make a family day out of it and get some content video content done for for the channel um, but the main reason i went is to see their twenty thousand gallon reef tank now they were when they started they it was the biggest twenty thousand gallon reef tank but since it's been 17 17 years since they started that reef tank and the since 17 years since the aquarium opened even so it's not the biggest anymore but it's still a beauty to look at so that's why I made the you know took the time to take a visit now once you walk in you know they have plenty of attractions as you can see they have the stingray exhibits you can feed the stingray the kids love it the stingrays are friendly um, they have a lot of exhibits um, I'm gonna try to show you as much as much as I can I won't be able to show everything um, I know they have a um, you know as you can see they have a stingray tank they have turtles um, they have they have a natural habitat of the Long Island Sound. Of you know, you can see the fishes that are typically found in the Long Island area in the waters of Long Island. They have a shark tank. Um, they have the reef tank, of course. They have an anemone tank. They also have freshwater tanks, uh, piranha tanks. Uh, they have a dedicated tank strictly for algae. So we're going to look at that later on. It's going to be quite interesting. Um, they have a butterfly exhibit. They have birds and they even have monkeys. Um, and I didn't take videos of those. Um, main reason was I wanted to focus more, really on, more on the on the coral, coral tank, the reef tank, and the anemone tank, and the other exhibits. Now, this video is going to be long. I'm just letting you know right now. So I'm not going to be talking a lot, only in the parts where I think, you know, I need to give out more information. Um, so other than that, just enjoy it. And keep in mind, I also forgot to mention they have a sea lion exhibit, a sea lion show every day. So if you have kids, take them with you. They will enjoy it. Um, and then once we get to the anemone tank, which is next, uh, I'll let you know in more details. Now they were in the anemone tank. Um, this is their rose bubble tip anemone tank. This is a huge tank and as you can see, it is filled with rose bubble tip anemones. It is mesmerizing to look at. I can't count how many anemones they have. Uh, probably 15 to 20 at least uh, rose bubble tip anemones. And these are like gigantic anemones. They've been growing them for years. As you can see, it's filled with tangs, um, skunk clowns, uh, Cardinals, um, so it is a beautiful tank. Um, I'm not sure how long this anemone tank has been up and running. I didn't get a chance to find out, but I mean, I just couldn't stop watching it. And the video does not do it justice, guys. So enjoy the tank. And you know, interesting thing with bubble tip anemones is that not all bubble tips have bubble tips. As you can see, these big ones, they are, they have no bubbles. They're just long tentacles. Now the smaller ones do have bubbles and you'll see later on the video so keep an eye out for that.
And the main reason uh, I came to visit is their 20,000 gallon reef tank. This is an enormous reef tank. I've never seen a tank this size in my life in person. Um, we're going to dive down into it. So this is the part you've been waiting for. Now, the curator, the guy who started this uh, reef tank 17 years ago, is Joe Ayulo. Um, now, he wasn't there the day I went. It was an unscheduled visit, but his assistant, um, Noel, was there. So... I had a great time talking to him, and we're going to hear from Noel right now. Hey, what's up, guys? So we're here with Noel uh, with Long Island Aquariums. Uh, Joe is not here today on the weekend, so Noel is going to be uh, helping us out, answer some of the questions that you guys may have about the reef tank. Um, so, Joe, Noel, just go ahead and uh, give us a little brief uh, review of this tank so far. Uh, so this tank is uh, 20,000 gallons. Uh, we've had it here at the Long Island Aquarium since we opened. Uh, we've been open for about 17 years now. Uh, Joe started this tank. Um, Joe came from the New York Aquarium, where he had worked for several years and started this aquarium um, with the hopes of having the largest uh, live reef tank in the world. And we did for a long time. Um, some when of these, you said long time, how long this was the biggest tank? Uh, I couldn't give you the, the exact number on that, but probably for about eight or nine years. Okay, so what's the know? next, what's the bigger, bigger one? Uh, there's a several now. There's one in Iceland. Um, then there's uh, the California Academy of Sciences has a 117,000 gallon reef tank. Um, so they, they like to make a joke that they're... Their sump is the same size as our tank now. Oh, really? So, yeah, but this is the yeah. biggest one in the East Coast. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, Georgia Aquariums uh, is pretty close. Not How a, close? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. I think I think it's I think it might be thirty thousand. But we'll cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Now, as but. far as corals go, any idea how many corals are on this tank right now? I, I know it's tell you. hard to keep yeah, track Yeah, I couldn't of tell it. you. Joe puts so many corals in here on a, a weekly basis. You know, he puts frags, he takes yeah, stuff also out. Yeah, frags on the other side in the front. Yeah, I mean, if you look at this giant acro colony here yeah. in the front, he fragged like 80 or 90 pieces off of that okay. last week. This is so. the one that we're looking at right now, right next to the... Yeah. Where that yellow tang is in right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he fragged 80 or 90 pieces out of that. That's above the reef. But I know for sure we, we have 87 different species of fish in here right now. I can okay. tell you that. 87. And yeah. which species will be the oldest one? Uh, for coral or for fish? Fish. Fish? Um, this is the purple tanks? Purple tanks are pretty old. Uh, some of the vomingis have been in here for... Uh, 12, 13 years. Um, but yeah, probably the purples are, are some of the originals to this tank. I heard uh, they're almost like 18 to 19 years old, some of the purple tanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have some of those are original. Some of these are from Joe's tank, too, when he, or he used to have uh, at home um, or in his garage. Uh, in our clownfish tank across, uh, some of those clowns are 25 years old now. The big so. anemone tank. Yeah, right. yeah. So a lot of these fish are, are pretty old. A lot of the antheas are fairly new. We used to have a lot of bigger fish in here, um, thread friend snappers and things like that, um, that we actually took out so that we could put a lot of the smaller fish in. Give more color uh, to it. More color, and then also m my job here is actually I do aquaculture. Um, so I, I bred uh, the first ever antheas uh, about two years ago. Um, so we've been trying to focus on breeding a lot more of the smaller fish, a lot more of the antheas and the wrasses and stuff like that so yeah, i don't see too many clowns on this tank any particular reason clowns um well he had the night grippies which hang out back in the magnificas back there okay. um he kind of wanted to have this different than the clownfish tank because he okay. has so many clowns in there um but also the night grippies are kind of one of his favorites so he wanted those to kind of be displayed in here there are a couple of uh perculas in here yeah. and that's just because uh, they actually we have them in tanks above and they sometimes slip through they jump into the overflow and get into the tank so I don't think he's actually purposely put any of the, the perculas in here. Now let's talk about the anemone right up front. So yeah. What kind of anemone is this? That's a uh, Magnifica. Magnifica. Um, and it's split from the main colony. If you look around the end right here there's a, a main colony of Magnifica right back there and uh, it actually split and crawled uh, to the front here 
And then uh, recently we had that one in the front split started going up the glass. And uh, he, he eventually took that off. It was really cool to watch it go up the glass for a little while. But uh, eventually, you know, it was in the viewers. Now, looking at this tank, there's barely any space in it. How do you guys do maintenance on this tank? <laughs> so Joe does all the maintenance on this tank. He actually gets in this tank about once a week. Um, he's got a path uh, around in different crevices and stuff like that. It's actually kind of fun to watch him. He's like a ballerina in there. You know, I mean, he's been doing this to this tank for, you know, 17 years. So he knows every corner, every spot that he, he's made uh, for himself. So it's pretty impressive to see him do that. And he... he he does it quite well. You know, some of those spaces are really tight, and you think, you know, Joe's hey, not exactly the smallest guy. Yeah. I mean, so you look at him, and you think, man, how do you fit in some of those spots? I mean, I couldn't fit in most of those spots. But uh, but so he goes in there. He goes in there uh, once or twice a week. He goes with a freshwater hose and sprays out some detritus. He does some fragging. Um, but, uh, yeah, he goes in there, and he'll he'll do some fragging. So, uh, no, what do you guys do with the fries? Little. Do you guys uh, sell it? Or? Yeah. So we actually have a company called Reef Gen that sells out of the aquarium. Um, they're a wholesaler. And um, so they'll, they'll frag it, and then we'll, we'll sell it through them, or we'll surplus to other aquariums, or we'll trade with uh, wholesalers or things like that to get other animals for the aquarium. Um, but, yeah, Reef Gen. Reefgen. Uh, the main and one do you have a website? Yeah, yeah. You can go to uh, uh, reefgen.com. Reefgen.com. You can go to Facebook, Instagram. They they have on there. Uh, they sell some of the fish that I breed too. So okay. okay. Now, I was gonna ask because the channel is about newer people getting into the reef tank hobby. Oh, cool. Now, cool. what would you recommend uh, for somebody fairly new into the reef tank hobby? Uh, what kind of corals they should focus on? What kind of fish they should focus on? Um, which ones to stay away from? Yeah. Uh, well, corals, you know, softies are always a really great spot to start with in the hobby. You know, getting some Kenya tree or leathers or things like that. Uh, yeah, that's zoas. A, that's a and, Kenya tree yeah, there. yeah. And gorgonians. You know, any, any softies are a good uh, place to start. LPS, you know, stuff like hammers and stuff like that are, are pretty relatively hardy. I'd stay away from acros until you really start getting into it. Um, but, Save you know, the SPS for later. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Save the SPS till you know more what you're doing and exactly. and you really have have gotten into it for a while, you know. Um, as far as fish go, you know, anything aquacultured is really great to start out with because it's really hardy. Um, it's also really sustainable to do when you're not really sure of what you're doing. Um, you know, clownfish, gobies, uh, those are all really hardy things. Um, you know, I really like antheus a lot, but those are, are not something you want to start with. Those are something you want to wait until you're a little bit more established. They need to be fed more often. Um, How often do antheus need to be fed? I mean, ideally, if you could get them fed four or five times a day. Um, smaller feeds, they don't need to necessarily be fed big feeds, but like with, with, besides the reef tank, a lot of the smaller tanks I'm going through, you know, once an hour and feeding them some pellets or some cyclops or some live plankton or whatnot. Now, by now, for this tank, I'm sure it's going to be hard for you guys to feed them, like, live food. So are they trained yeah. uh, to eat flakes and uh, dry foods? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. So we actually, so we feed this tank about four times a day. Okay. Um, so right when we get here in the morning and we're doing our morning checks, we go up and we'll feed them some uh, pellets and flakes. Um, and then about, about now, uh, or around here in the afternoon, we do a big mysis feed. Um, and then we do several cyclops feeds, frozen cyclops throughout the day. Now the mice that you guys feed them, is it freeze dried or just live? It's fr frozen, yeah, it's frozen. yeah, it's frozen. Um, also when Joe, Joe does really big feeds, so on his weekends, you know, I'm covering his stuff. Um, so I feed whatever I, whenever I get the chances, but when Joe's here, he does really heavy feeds. He, he feeds tons of cyclops, tons of PE mice, Hikari mice, he's doing sand eels, he's doing krill. He's doing a bunch of stuff, but um, generally I don't do those on the weekends because when you do a big feed, you got to do a big water change that day. And so I try to do as little water changes when he's not here as possible. Now, speaking <laughs> of water changes, yep. how often do you guys do water changes? So we do a water change basically once a week. Um, we do roughly 10%. 
uh, once a week. But we do a backwash every other day on the because we have two sand filters on here, um, and that's to keep the pressure down and to stir it up because those get pretty clogged with detritus. Uh, but we usually do a freshwater backwash when we do that, um, so that that kind of cleans it out, you know, stirs it out and kills a lot of the bad bacteria in there. Um, but yeah, about ten percent. For, for water changes. 10%, but, my math is pretty bad. How many gallons would that be? Uh, about 2,000 each week, give or take a few. How long does it take to do a water change of 2,000 gallons? <laughs> uh, actually, not too long. It takes about uh, 5 to 10 minutes, depending on uh, which pump Joe's using to backwash it out, because we have pretty uh, extensive pumps on this tank. I see. Speaking of pumps, I see the flow it's pretty consistent and it looks like it's coming from all around. Yeah. What kind of power heads are that you guys are using here? So we have a, a prop unit in the left corner of the tank, which is run off of, uh, I forget the exact horsepower, but I want to say uh, a three horsepower pump. Uh, we also have in the back right corner of the tank a Hydra Wizard, which is a German prop unit. Um, and then run across the front of the tank, we have, uh, I think, a dozen sea swirls. Um, and then we also have the sea swirls are running out of uh, actually not, not not a lot of people use the sea swirls anymore. No, no, they're pretty old school. Joe's Joe's pretty old school about his stuff, uh, but they work well. Um, I don't even know where he would get a replacement. I don't know if they still sell those uh, very very regularly in the hobby. But uh, and then we have the Carlson surge device, which I okay. can show you in a few minutes uh, okay. above, and that that goes off about every six minutes. It dumps 300 gallons of water into the tank okay. and creates a big surge for the corals. Now, looking at those acropores on the top left corner, there looks like they're about to stick out of the water. Yeah, so yeah. That, you guys are going to frag them eventually, I guess. Or? Yeah. So what Joe does is about once a month, he goes in and he frags all those corals down, like almost to the bare bone. Yeah. You know, there he frags them down pretty significantly, and then uh, just lets them grow back and continually does that. It takes about a month. Maybe wow. two, and then they're already back up. Yeah. That they, is a they pretty, grow pretty, pretty, quick. pretty significant growth for acroporos in a yeah, month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, as far as dosing goes, what do you guys dose? You dose this tank or not? Yeah, so we do several things. Joe does magnesium from ESV. Uh, he does calc. We dose calc, uh, calc wasser each day. We do about uh, two deli cups. Um, he doses lanthium chloride, uh, trace elements from ESV. Um, what else do we dose? Uh, iron we dose into the tank. Um, all in pretty significant amounts, you know. Yeah. Something that you know you would do in a regular 300 gallon reef tank, you would do three or four mils. Joe yeah. does 300 to 400 <laughs> mils, you know. Um, and I could we can go above the tank here in a minute, I'll show you that. You can get some video of all that stuff too. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so you guys have two protein skimmers. So the big one, how many gallon does that? How many? Um, that's 300 gallons, that's 300 gallons, yeah. Yeah. and the smaller one is it's probably. Maybe a hundred gallons. Hundred gallons. Got the, the base there. Now, do you guys run dry skimming and wet skimming, or just both? Both. Yeah. Both. So, which one does the dry skimming? The smaller one, the and smaller. the bigger one yep. does the wet skimming. Yep. Okay. And I see you guys have some beautiful frags in the back here. Um, very, very beautiful hammers. Yeah. Yeah. This is just uh, so these tanks are all kind of uh, serve a couple different purposes. Um, one. Joe likes to go to his frag swaps, he likes to go to Mac, you know, all that. He always gets little frags. Obviously, we can't put the frags into the tank, so he grows them out in these, these troughs and these tanks and then puts plants them into the, the reef. Uh, the other purpose is, is anytime he frags anything out of the reef tank, uh, we actually have a bunch of troughs uh, in another part of the building that we use for reef gen. Um, but before we move any of the coral frags from the main uh, reef to there, they go into, like, a, a hospital trough. Uh, to recover for a few days on the same system uh, before we move them. Gives them a few days to really get that growth back. About 300 gallons? About 300 gallons, yeah. It looks amazing from up top. It's a whole other yeah, it's a whole experience. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can notice that Joe has a lot of corals that you can't see from the public view. Yeah. A lot of that's just because over time he doesn't have any place left. There's no space left. Yeah. And he still wants to get new stuff, so he puts corals 
but also some of it's just self-fragging, which is a fascinating thing to see from a biological standpoint. Is that, you know, some of these monkeys and stuff like that drop yeah. a piece, and they and just it start growing. growing. Yeah, see, though, I see some smaller ones all the way in the bottom. Yeah, you can see from the front a little bit. There's some that floated all the way over there. Oh, right. it's amazing. I thought you guys did it yourself, but you're telling me they fragged on their own. Yeah, yeah, or a fish knocks into a arm or, oh, okay. you know, just like on a real reef. So let's talk about the, the, the lights. So how many watts? A thousand watts. Each? Each yeah. or all together? Each. Okay. Each. How many LEDs does he have right now? He's got four. Uh, he's got the three cannons. Which are max specs, I believe. Okay. And then he's got that pendant one over there. Which is over there in the corner. I can't remember the company off the top of my head, but he's got that one, that one, and then those two. And they're all companies that are, are trying to test their lights on tanks these big, you know. Okay, they okay. have a market for that, so they're trying some uh, prototypes on our tank. So you got this is like the guinea pig section. Yeah. <laughs> Now at this point I was outside the tank and Noel uh, did the um, daily feeding as you can see a uh, bunch of mice and shrimp all over the tank and I mean, it's an amazing view um, so not everybody gets to experience this if you go around this time I believe it was one at this time I think it was around four o'clock I'm assuming probably four o'clock uh, that's when they did the last feeding um, so as you can see it's right there um, I'm gonna shut up uh, I know you guys want to watch this tank so a couple more minutes I'm gonna um, let you guys enjoy this view and after that we'll get to the next exhibits that I covered um, and I'll let you know more details about it at that time
So I hope you guys enjoyed um, the video clips. Uh, I know I, I enjoyed it. So we're going to move down to the rest of the exhibits. So they also have... As you can see, it's a long and long tentacle, long tube anemone. I'm sorry, it's a tube anemone. Um, the pic, the video doesn't do it justice. If you look at it live, the color just pops and it, and it is mesmerizing. It's very slow. As you can see, the movements are really, really slow. And they're very beautiful. I'm, I'm thinking I might get one for my tank if I can locate one. <laughs> um, so if you guys know anybody or anywhere I can buy these two anemones from, just let me know because I'm looking to get one. Um, and I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna quickly go over the rest of the exhibits they have. They're gonna be really short, but I'm just gonna give you guys a glimpse of what to expect. Um, they also have sun coral tank, a tank full of sun corals. Um, I'm looking to get sun coral as well. Um, I, I heard even though they're named sun coral, they're actually uh, non-photosynthetic, if I'm correct. Um, they don't really need direct sunlight uh, to make food. Um, so there's the sun corals right there. And I'm going to, right after this, we're going to look at the... Uh, look at this gorgonian, it's beautiful. Um, we're going to look at then look at their... The algae tank, um, a tank dedicated just to algae. Um, so, so here we go. We're gonna shift to the algae tank view right now. And as you can see, this tank is infested with all types of algae. Uh, it's a really interesting tank just to dedicate it to algae. I mean, if you look at my tank, you'll see algae all over it. Um, you can see it's starfish is all over, algae growing to insane amounts. Um, I'm sure they don't have to do too much maintenance to uh, grow algae, just bad water, high phosphates, and you're good to go, I guess. Um, so after the algae tank, um, they also have, um, let's see what tank we're going to look at, this algae tank. The discus tank. Uh, even though I'm not into fresh water, I did capture some of the fresh water exhibits they have, and I really like the discus tank. Um, I heard they're very popular in the fresh water community. Um, never got into it myself, but when I looked at them, they they look really really cool. Um, I was in, you know kind of interested in that. And as you can see, it's a lionfish um, tank, a predator tank. These lionfishes look vicious and venomous. Um, let's see what other exhibits we have. I think the piranha tank is I covered right after it. Um, let's see the piranha tank. I wish I wish in the piranha tank they had a feeding option that you you know they would feed and you can see how crazy they go. So as you can see the piranhas right there, and we're gonna look at um, a planted uh, tank freshwater planted tank it looks like it's been growing for a while it looks really really good and very natural and after this we're going to look at their shark tank and the atlantis um exhibit uh, the sharks look amazing it's a gigantic tank with shark and they have a shark dive as well option uh, i think you gotta pay extra during a certain time of the day uh, they put you in a shark cage and you just drop the cage in the water and you can look at the shark from inside the cage under the water <laughs> it's a good experience if you want to take advantage of it so guys you know i had a great experience uh, at long island aquarium i do really recommend if you're in the area definitely go visit them um and if you have any questions about the aquarium or the exhibits you know feel free uh, to leave in the comments below i'll try to answer them as best as i can other, other than that you know just go to their website all the information is there they, they even have sleepover nights so if you have kids and they want to sleep over you can do that um so uh, with that being said i'm going to end the video well i'm going to end talking the video will be running for another couple of minutes um we're going to go back um, to the the reef tank the 20,000 gallon reef tank um, overall I want to give, give a great shout out uh, to Long Island Aquarium for being hospitable uh, Noel for all his help and information and showing me around giving me the 
private tour in the back. I uh, highly appreciate it. Uh, sorry, Joe, I missed you. Uh, I didn't catch you when you were there. But maybe next time I visit, we'll, I'll have an opportunity to interview uh, Joe Ayulo. So, guys, you know, Debbie said I'm going to leave you guys alone. Um, enjoy the rest of the video. And until next time, happy briefing.